Hello and welcome to Tech24, I'm Annelise Borges. Coming up, the money of the future. In today's show, we decrypt the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. And one of the most influential figures in surgical robotics in a high-tech revolutionary. We speak to Bertrand Naum from MedTech. Also in the show, how to secure your data with hack-proof passwords. But first, Bitcoin has surprised many with its performance as a traded currency. Since its creation in 2009, its value has increased from $2 per coin to around $1,000 in recent months. A revolutionary way of making payments and helping causes, like the one of this random spectator at a televised sports event who held up a sign with a QR code and the message, send me Bitcoin. He received 25,000 US dollars in Bitcoin in the first 24 hours, all from people he had never met. In 2013, it was not just Bitcoin's valuation that skyrocketed, but its infrastructure, services and adoption exploded as well. Has Bitcoin hit the jackpot? Oh the digital currencies arrived in Las Vegas. Two casino hotels are now accepting Bitcoin as room payment and in several of their restaurants and shops. Online auction and shopping site eBay UK has also jumped on the Bitcoin bandwagon, adding it as a virtual currency category, although sales are limited to its classified advertising platform, which requires the buyer to contact the seller directly. With a growing online and commercial presence, Bitcoin is becoming more mainstream. That comes to €6.60, so that's 0.0103 bitcoins. Extremely user-friendly, purchases can be made with a simple click. There are no charges nor third parties. This lack of control, however, is a helping hand for those involved in criminal activities. A drug trafficker was arrested by French authorities at the end of December. Under the cover of the anonymous Bitcoin system, customs officers posed as buyers, catching the dealer red-handed. One site notorious for using Bitcoins for this type of illegal activity was known as Silk Road. Its founder was arrested by the FBI in October last year. It's a terrible tool for money laundering. Um, and it's a terrible tool for criminal activity either. And now that, built, now that the Silk Road has been shut down, with, without the Silk Road, people still want Bitcoins. Even without the Silk Road, it's higher. The cost of it's, it's more expensive now to get a Bitcoin than it was before. Bitcoin is regularly singled out by the authorities. In mid-January, France's Finance Commission interviewed members of the Treasury, the French Central Bank and Bitcoin professionals to look into regulating the currency. There are now an estimated 12 million Bitcoins in circulation, worth the equivalent of 1 billion euros. He was shortlisted among the top five revolutionary high-tech entrepreneurs by the 2012 Discovery Series ranking. Also on that list, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg and James Cameron. Bertrand Naum is my guest today. Thank you so much, Bertrand, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hello. Um, the title they attributed to you is Revolutionary High-Tech Entrepreneur. How do you define yourself? Are you comfortable with that title? I am proud. I am very proud. I am very proud to, to see uh, such a ranking which is going to show the, the work from, from a team, a whole team, because behind Rosa, this is not only me, that's a whole team uh, that has been working on, on this project for quite a few years and seeing uh, the fruit of this work being, uh, you know, uh, being at, the, at the top of the ranking is something that I am very proud of. And uh, we're going to talk about Rosa in a moment. Uh, but just before that, you founded MedTech in 2000 and contributed to the development of groundbreaking surgical robotic technology. Tell us a little bit about your background. How and when did you decide that you were going to devote your technical skills to saving lives? Actually, my background is engineering. Uh, I studied in France and in the UK also. I got a, a Master of Science in Robotics. And this is at the end of my studies, uh, engineering studies, that I discovered how technology could be used for probably one of the most important things in life, which is curing, caring for, for, for patients. And this was a, a, a very good surprise for me. And from this date, I decided I wanted to basically use my skills, my engineering skills, to design technologies for the patients. And so you mentioned Rosa. MedTech launched this robot. Uh, 
perhaps one of your most impressive and important creations uh, is a robot that assists doctors during brain surgery. It's kind of like the, I've, I've been hearing the, this expression, GPS of the brain. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yes, indeed. Uh, Rosa is a kind of GPS, as you say, which is going to uh, guide the surgeon's hand in order to bring enhanced accuracy and security to uh, surgeries of the brain. Rosa was uh, uh, used for very, very uh, important uh, surgeries, like uh, this surgery that was carried out a few years ago on a, on a few months old baby. This surgery was carried out from, by uh, Dr. Delalande in Rothschild Foundation in Paris. Wow, have you witnessed some of these surgeries? Were you there at the moment? I wasn't, but actually that's the kind of thing that we are very proud of because we are bringing our humble contribution to uh, patient babies actually being uh, cured in a better way. Um, so you've got this technical success on one hand and a successful French company on the other hand. Of which are you most proud? Uh, I am proud obviously of being a French company uh, in the high-tech world. We are uh, basically open to the world. Uh, we are doing business uh, in, in, in the UK, uh, in, uh, in the US also. We are in China, in Russia. And at the same time, we are very uh, grounded on the, on, the, on the south of France because this is where we are located in Montpellier. And I believe that we are finding quite very good um, solution, very good people to basically uh, create this innovation that we use all over the world. A very good environment then for, for tech businesses in France. Tell me a little bit about your opinion. In your opinion, what's the future of uh, tech healthcare? Where do you see this going? I think that uh, tech healthcare uh, is going to be more and more used because tech healthcare uh, can basically respond to the main challenges of murder, modern surgery. Uh, the main challenges of modern surgery come from the fact that people are getting older and older, which means that we have more and more people to cure. Those patients are basically expecting a very high level of uh, quality care. Uh, they are less and less uh, professional, healthcare professional, and there is a very strong trend in surgery, which is what we call minimally invasive surgery. That means that we try to do surgeries with smaller and smaller incisions. And I believe that technology, uh, high-tech healthcare uh, technology can be used basically to respond to those challenges. So the potential in this area seems limitless, but how can we make sure that all countries benefit, not only uh, rich countries, but also the poorest ones? Take it this way, I believe that technology is some, somehow is just like Formula One. Uh, somehow we, we have to start from, from somewhere and eventually uh, these progresses will be used and will be a uh, benefit for everybody. All right, thank you so much, Bertrand, for joining us here today on Tech24. And we're going to move on to another story. Germany's security agency revealed that the passwords and other details of 16 million email users in Germany have been stolen. And according to software firm Splash Data, in most cases, users are the ones to blame. Splash Data says most of us use weak passwords and released a list of the worst passwords of 2013. If you use any of these, my advice is that you rush to change it immediately. On Wednesday, the U.S. security firm Splash Data released its annual list of the 25 most commonly used passwords on the Internet worldwide. This year again, users still don't seem that inspired. The first prize goes to the most obvious numerical sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, followed in second place by the word password. Many choose these simple logins to make sure that they won't forget it. According to experts, the frequency of their use makes it much easier for hackers and criminals to access online accounts and profiles. It's also not a good idea to use the same password for different websites. If a hacker gained access to one of your accounts, he'll likely be able to access more than one of our services. Other passwords in the top 10 include QWERTY, ABC123 and I love you. So here's a tip to increase the security of your password. Make it complex. A mix of upper and lower cases, digits and punctuation. Even better, Pick a word that doesn't exist in any language. 
That way you'll increase your chances of not being found in the information flow of internet. And that's all we have time for. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Tech24. You can get in touch with us on Facebook or on Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24. And we leave you today with images of Slovakia's first flying car, inspired by the dreamy books by French authors Jules Verne and Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. The designers have been working on the project since 1990s. And here you see the pre-prototype put to the test. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.